Daniel Grabois in French, Dan Graboy in English. <laughs> and, uh, so I ha I'm coming at this from a completely different angle from probably all of you. I started my job at UW-Madison seven years ago, a complete, uh, with zero knowledge in electro, electronic music or electroacoustic music. And so I'm develop developing my knowledge. I've owned a continuum for five or six months. And so this, uh, my head is exploding from all that I've learned. But um, the lab that I started is um, a learning space for students and faculty, a research space for myself. Uh, and so there are lots of instruments in addition to the continuum. And so I'm going to talk about just the process for developing the lab and what's going on there and uh, my hopes. So this is actually my regular job. I'm the horn professor at UW-Madison. And when I was hired, there was no talk of electronic music at all, uh, just of teaching my horn students. Um, so uh, UW-Madison is what's, kn what's known as a research one university, meaning that all of the faculty is expected to produce research. And these are the things that are generally understood to be research within the school of music there. Um, and so I've done all of these except for writing books. Actually, I've even written music books. So um, that's the basic outline of the kind of research we're expected to produce. And so when I arrived at my job, I had a research budget, uh, which I used to buy some electronic equipment because I was interested in learning Ableton Live and in trying to make my horn sound like an electric guitar. So small beginnings with just a piece, few pieces of equipment. You can see there's a, a volume pedal and a wah-wah pedal, and there's a soft step, and there's an interface and just little things and me on the floor. Um, and I used the equipment that I had bought to actually create a CD with using um, multi-tracking, using my horn uh, that had been changed in various ways and I brought in, once I had recorded, written and recorded all my music, I brought in a drummer and a bass player to record their parts. And that's freaking out. Okay, so I ended up uh, releasing this album called Air Names, um, for, which is a little bit hard to read on the slide. So um, it's basically pieces for horn, adapted or changed horn with uh, bass and drums. And I was very interested in continuing on, figuring out what else could happen. The, the horn is such a orchestrally and chamber music associated instrument. Um, generally when people hear it, they think of Mahler and uh, Wagner and also Star Wars, movie music, <laughs> John Williams. Um, and so, for me, changing the sound of the instrument is a really exciting prospect, and which is a prospect that also led me to want to explore other instruments. So this grant was announced three summers ago called UW, which is University of Wisconsin, UW 2020. And the idea of the grant was um, to fund large electronics purchases. Um, there had been a first round of the grant and it was made available to the sciences. The idea was that um, the chemistry department would go to um, the research funder for the university and say, we need an electron microscope. And then the biochemistry department would go and they would say, we need an electron microscope. And then the zoology department would go and say, we need an electron microscope. And so the idea behind this grant was to try to bring people together and buy one electron microscope instead of three and share the wealth. Uh, the second round, for the second round of the grant, um, one of the um, administrators at the university convinced the, our funder that the humanities have needs as well. And so they opened up this grant uh, to the humanities uh, to try to get a hold of some of this money. And a little email came in about uh, the grant that was one of these things that you would perhaps immediately put in the trash. But I happened to look through it and think that this might be a, a great way for me to vastly expand my resources from my little collection of two pedals and an interface. And so I uh, got together with, uh, there was, it was one other faculty member who works in this realm who gave me lots of great ideas about what I would want to buy. 
and I consulted with other people as well, which I'll get to in a second, and I added up all the pieces of equipment that I wanted to get, and it came to that figure there, $161,121 at list price, and so I put together a grant for that exact amount. Uh, some of the people that I consulted with, some of you may know Todd Reynolds, who um, works with, on the, he's a great violinist and works within live, and I've known him from my time in New York. And then NYU has this incredible new $6 million research facility, and so I just called up the director of that. Um, McGill University has Kermit, which is an amazing facility, and I, a friend put me in touch with somebody there. I, it has been amazing to me, and this has just continued now, how friendly the people who know about this stuff are and how willingly they give of their knowledge. So thank you to you and all of your colleagues. It's amazing. And the good news is that I received $161,121 to build this studio. And especially incredible because Wisconsin, you may not know, especially if you're from Europe rather than the States, has been cutting, 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 cutting their education budget. And so in an atmosphere of loss and decay, to be able to build something new that for a musician is with a, just a ton of money was an amazing thing. Hence the birth of EARS, the Electroacoustic Research Space, and we even got two little speakers there uh, on our door. So I took over this classroom, which uh, like most of our classrooms is not particularly pleasant. It's a building that was built in the late 1960s and started ordering and things started arriving. Um, so um, the, this whole idea of how to build a space was completely new to me and I was just trying to figure out what had to happen. So one of the first things was a renovation. So there it begins. Of course, the tiles on the floor um, had asbestos glue, so we had asbestos abatement issues, and the fact that the classroom was absolutely horrible, so we painted and pulled things out and redid the electricity and so on. And then the unpacking process began. Um, I recycled a lot of cardboard. So I had bundled a lot of my purchases because of the way we have to do purchasing. It made much more sense to find large vendors and put together huge amounts of equipment and order them that way. Um, some things like the continuum can't really be bought that way, but many things can, entire systems of pedals and uh, various controllers and stuff. So I bundled and s by bundling I saved a bundle of money, which meant that I could look for more stuff. One of my colleagues suggested we should get an Onde Martineau. In the States, the Onde Martineau is becoming popular again, thanks to Radiohead, and everybody wants one, including me. Um, but I, it was very expensive, and I can't even remember exactly how, but my search for an Onde Martineau led me to the continuum, which I had never heard of, and I was thrilled and immediately got in touch with Lippold, and I ordered one. And uh, as I say, here was love at first touch. Um, so my studio built up and got complete and we had a grand opening which was heavily populated as you can see. And uh, here's what it looked like the day before I left for Paris. Um, it's in a constant state of chaos and rearrangement. Um, in a book that I read about setting up your studio, it said you will set up your studio and decide on the perfect place for everything and within a year everything will be in a different place. So at this point my, these keyboards are all bundled together and uh, who knows what it will be like next year. So uh, there's several uses for the space. Uh, teaching is the first, so I'm this semester in spite of my lack of knowledge teaching a class in electroacoustic composition. Um, and what's really interesting is, especially with instruments that are very hands-on, is that composers who want to study this kind of music have a very different way of thinking about sound and thinking about creating sound because they're not doing it so much mentally as very physically. And I find that's especially the case with an instrument that they don't have any training on. That they, come, they go to places where they normally aren't used to going, which to me is a great way to expand one's creativity. Um, I have, as you may have seen, a Moog synthesizer and I love the playing with the synth synthesizer. Um, 
but I've found that there's a large learning curve. I have not, I was watching Russ patch away and I was thinking, wow, I don't know how to patch my synth at all. Um, and, uh, and most of my students haven't even experimented with that either. The learning curve is very large. One thing that I found that's great about the continuum is the presets make it easy to find a sound and see what happens with that sound. Um, very accessible, very hands-on. Um, I founded a ensemble called Two Dollar Broom. I don't suppose anybody gets that reference no. from Captain Beefheart. What this world needs is a good two dollar room and a good two dollar broom. So now we have a good two dollar broom. And that's a student ensemble where everything is improvised and the students can play their own instruments, run through pedals uh, or through Ableton Live, but they can also use my instruments. And they, get, they actually got up on stage a few weeks ago not one of them had improvised or done any of this and they played for 45 minutes with no music stands on stage which was an incredible experience and gives me hope for our future uh, they're all classical players they get into the school by auditioning on classical music so it's a huge stretch for them um, and yeah so they've they're learning not only how to be fearless on stage but how to do it with these strange instruments Ears is not a recording studio, but we do have a lot of recording equipment that can be brought off-site. And of course, recording, we can use Ears to record instruments like uh, the Continuum since we can record direct onto the computer. So in a sense, it is a recording space. And so here's a list of the things that I find that the Continuum adds to, as an uh, important component in the larger collection of instruments. It's so hands-on, so easy to get started. This variety of sounds is huge, and I was excited at the concert that my students played. So I was sitting at the computer that the person playing the continuum would say, give me a sound that's like, and then they would describe it, and I would try to find something that suited their needs, and then somebody else would come and say, I want a more bell-like sound. And so the ability easily to explore these different timbres was really great. Um, I can speak for my own students on the horn, if I asked them to improvise on the horn, they would be petrified and say they couldn't do it. Whereas when I asked them to improvise on the continuum, they can make cool sounds without having to think about it just through the sense of touch. I also very much like the polyphonic nature of the continuum and find myself more attracted to it rather than something like the Moog because just the ability to play chords and especially slide around with them uh, is hugely advantageous and I have I don't know if any of you know the react table but I have a react table the big full trash can size and it's really cool and a few students have learned it but it's taken them a semester in spite of the intuitive nature in the the react table doesn't even come with a manual because it says it's so intuitive so uh, it's not that intuitive and it takes a long time whereas this does not take a long time so for me, technical issues, and this is partly why I'm here, so just learning how to use every single instrument and how to connect things, and I'm about 5% of the way towards where I would like to be. Big learning curve, sorting through MIDI inputs. I've gotten some help with that since I've come here, learning how to use each piece of equipment and getting some playing expertise on each piece of equipment. And the routing on my digital mixing board is so incomprehensible. So if any of you have, finds yourself in Madison, I will gladly accept your help on that. Um, so my conclusion here is that learning from scratch is really hard, but very fun and very rewarding. So for me, my own future project is uh, I'm, this summer I have funding to create a new CD and it's going to be a symphony, whatever that means, for my solo horn in its own voice unaltered with an electroacoustic accompaniment and um, the thing that Benedict did yesterday was giving me some great ideas about what one of the things that might be in the background with playing the horn through that sort of vocoder effect. I'm expecting there will be plenty of continuum. I have an iwi so I don't need a bass player anymore um, and so I have to write this music and this is the other thing about this is that by using these instruments together with live, com composing has nothing to do now for me with writing notes on a piece of staff paper. It's, all, it's more like sculpting with clay. I have my material, I put it into live, and then I can build from there 
which is just a completely different methodology and very interesting. So wish me luck on that project. It's going to be huge and hard. And I will now happily take any questions. I saw you first, Russ. So, so, uh, so seeing your, your great uh, studio at lab there, my, my question is, uh, can you give us some good recommendations on hotels near the university? Yes, I can. Just get in touch with me. and Yeah, of course, anybody is welcome to come check it out. We've had visitors from all over the country who want to check it out because there's not a lot of uh, places like this, especially in the Midwest. Um, so, yeah, you can stay with me when you come. I saw you had the um, Bose L1 system, so it looks yes. like you have four. We got four. eight of those speakers. Eight? Yeah, and... Um, so what drove you to that decision? They were recommended by my colleague who saw Pat Metheny using them and thought they sounded amazing, which they do. And what I especially like about the Bose Tower speakers is that they maintain the geography on stage. So if you're performing, you put one instrument per speaker, and then the sound of that instrument comes from that player. There aren't feedback problems, and you don't have this kind of bunching problem of the sound, which I became very acutely aware of with my see when I finished recording my CD and brought it to my mixing engineer, and it felt like the entire contents of the disc was being blasted out of a can and straight in the face, and the mixer was able to tease things out and make space, and it's important to me to be able to do that on stage. So those L1 speakers are really great for that. If you were to have uh, one uh, composer or someone come and do a talk to your students, who would you choose to come and talk and hopefully inspire the students and yourself? Like someone who you admire their work. Robert Fripp. That's a, good, that's a good answer. Yeah. It's really interesting to watch videos and see the, sort of the evolution of his equipment from these giant boxes and, and uh, things have changed quite a bit. But I love that the worlds of classical music and the worlds of pop music, or as I like to think of it, the world in which we lose money and the world in which we make money are starting to come together. And as prices come down, it's possible to take advantage those of us who live in the world that loses money, to take advantage of some of these incredible pieces of equipment. Ableton Live being a great example, and uh, largely used by hip hop artists who make money off of it, but I can play weird music through it and adapt it to my own use, and it's not that expensive. Okay, thank you very much Let's for eat. this very interesting talk. Thank and you. Also, thank you very much for be taking us break back, on, back on schedule because we sure. managed to. to yeah, Enjoy your lunch. Thank you.